All right, welcome back to Danganronpa. We're now on part four. We're about to start trial number two and figure out who killed our sweet, sweet Chihiro. Uh, fair warning, uh, this trial in particular does have a potential trigger warning for mental health and gender identity issues. Um, we did kind of talk about this a little bit off stream with um, the folks that aren't familiar with the game without saying too much to spoil the trial. Uh, but just so everybody's aware going in. Uh, with that said, let's uh, get started. How's everybody doing? Blind. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Blind. So um, blind. Yeah. Oh, I'm so not. blind. I want to stream. Yeah. The <laughs> 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 weird thing is I had it streaming before. I don't know why I decided it to stop. It turned off for some reason. <laughs> All good. Okay. All right. Well, I think we actually have more skills than we did last time. Yep, we have things to spend points on. Uh, do we have more than one? <laughs> I think it might just be one. Uh, oh god, it's only just one more. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, at least do the these other... even matter, seeing as how Kex knows all of the answers. It can, it can matter. And yeah, we got our last gift from Chihiro too. Isn't that nice? Mm. <laughs> oh, too late, too late. Mm -hmm. All right. Clearly, you should have done the optimize. Uh -huh. eh. We're good. Here we go. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone will graduate! Okay then, so... First off... Let's talk about the murder weapon! First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. I do it this time. still bitter that you're stuck between worst person and waifu. <laughs> A blunt instrument. It was still the floor, I maintain. <laughs> Clearly the floor. Shut up. He wrote, God you're an it. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> How could you miss Kex? Because I'm terrible. It's so much hair! Y'all put far too much faith in me. <laughs> the weapon had to be at the scene of the crime. How could Kex miss the shot? Uh, shoot. Oh, it gives you a chance to do it again. That's nice, at least. Uh, yeah, it just. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 oh, God! Oh, She's showing up the mechanics, it's fine. Oh, <laughs> Kex God. is showcasing what happens when you this suck. Is, this is definitely <laughs> intentional, and I'm not a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god! I got 13 minutes on the clock! I swear to god. <laughs> Alright, we're just gonna. We should just restart this stream. Oh <laughs> now to her. Uh, I'm just gonna go put myself in timeout. <laughs> It's fine. Someday. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. Consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. Huh, <laughs> sorry. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You, you looked at her like a head wound? If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is... The fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. 
Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Let's just repeat what he said. Everyone needs a thesaurus <laughs> now. Fiendish is the only descriptor. Literally. Why does the school not have thesauruses? Did he really kill Chihiro? What was that, Dottie? It's literally all Makoto does is just repeat what other people say and get cookies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. It works yep. out well. Uh, yeah, what actually is the new element? The element has been added to the nonstop debates. Oh, the white noise. Lines okay. of white noise will appear. That, that, yeah, don't even worry about it. I shoot the, th I shoot the thingies. Okay. Will Kex get better at aiming the truth gun? Maybe. Some days the world just wants you to be a stormtrooper. I feel, I feel personally attacked, even though it's totally my fault. From up in the future, please. <laughs> <laughs> just think how more ludicrous these mini games will become as we go on. <laughs> Wait, she's being smart for once. It could be her! Clearly. I don't think she's not smart enough for this. <laughs> I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What, what the fuck was something like that doing in the library? That's what's weird to you about this whole situation? Mm -hmm. The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. I hate you. It You're next me. to Fumi. It took you and seven no minutes one... before you were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, we even had Kex screw up that minigame so often, and you still only got seven minutes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we gave you every chance at Fumi. <laughs> Uh, no, it's actually bloodlust. Duh. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. All of the scissors. Never been made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know... If I'm not mistaken, it has to do with the positioning of the body. And then we still have bloody message to be selected. Right. Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. Hmm? One second. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Here we go. Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! <gasps> what? Hey, like, okay, wait. 
Hold on a sec! Doko has like bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of like blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes. And no. Another riddle? Man, why is this gotta be so complicated? <laughs> it's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also to not be Toko. The answer is that... She's not just one person, but multiple people, right? This is a real medical condition and not something that only exists in film. Alright, time for the stupidest hangman gambit. It's, it is and fact. now we will be using a slur. <sighs> Koto, this is your brain. <laughs> this is Makoto's brain. <laughs> I blame what other people say. I am not smart enough to know what language is on my own. I really need a thesaurus. Someone else put this word in my head. It's fine. This is the Makoto that can read. <laughs> uh, at least we've got that one. <laughs> it's, is it because Genocide Jack, ellipses for emphasis, has a split personality? Has dissociative identity disorder? I mean, maybe, but we're also not psychologists, so we can't make that call. I should not be talking about this, that's okay. <laughs> if only Ultimate Therapist was here, maybe we could avoid murdering each other. <laughs> oh, I mean, Shutting Ultimate Therapist is dead already, so... <laughs> I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. Okay, to be fair, we are on a trial for murder, and we have until the end of it. There's not really, let's make an appropriate diagnosis. Nope. They thought that the suspect might have, what did they call it? Disassociative Identity Disorder? Right name. That's honestly almost impressive. Mm -hmm. Almost. Almost. Hifumi? Okay, but still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is. Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality, it has to do with her behavior. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Shihiro's corpse, and then when she woke up. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Oh, is that a dead body? Hey! Are you dead? <laughs> she must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The oil has a front and a back, a copy and a bum, a sweet proof, and a level of life! This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> she was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. <laughs> Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and she saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. So, like, when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of, like, Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control! The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? 
Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous feet inside of her, of killing even more people. Yeah, like, how can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying what she's trying to say isn't how can you all know this? No, what she wants to know is how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? This is like all a lie, right, Toko? You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? But your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? You don't mean Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second. It's too easy. I don't think it's Toko. Oh Jesus. god! <laughs> Real oak. Oh, oh god. Okay. <laughs> Me, you hoping to be? What the heck? I think this is the first time we all agree with Hifumi. Yeah, a little bit. So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous feet. Genocide Jack! I'm better yet. Let's go with Genocide Jill. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Nah, Toko. I don't do his name. <laughs> what happened is a textbook split personality. <laughs> so, if one of them happens to be a serial killer, <laughs> you shouldn't turn a blind eye to his fault. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I, I love everything about this. <laughs> So intense. She's a double rainbow. <laughs> they they say sound and murderous mind, sound and murderous body. So then you stem a cucumber that you are one of the so different. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. <laughs> Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depth of every tooth. Behind every dark and gloomy door, lives another that shines as bright as the sun. <laughs> this is the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. This is this is this is beyond insane. I was expecting a little bit more there. <laughs> Oh damn it! Can I try that again? Go ahead. That's aiming for. <laughs> it totally was. <laughs> it needed to happen. I'm glad you redid the line. I yes. Needed to. Very much so. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> then she's psychic it, too. Then it, it's not true. Of course, it's not true. How dare you try to link me to that boyfriend? Another thing. Police and government and society and the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, you just let this idiotic, bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. <laughs> It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. <laughs> Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Jihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of her exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. I knew that was too easy. Huh? But I can't imagine anyone other than you murder in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so. But nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah, like, never believe a word you say. You like monster? Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but. Th but something's still bothering me. But she said. I need to get more, uh, some more details about all of this. Okay, at this point in the game, I'm more comfortable with it being Byakuya, because now that he knows Genocide Jack is here, that's a great reason for him to do the copycat murder, try to pin it on her, and get the fuck out. 
I don't know that it is him though. I don't think it is, but like it's I'm less opposed to it than I was at the end of last session. Yeah, I get that. Did we shoot the right thing? Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not sure about that. Good boy, have a cookie. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Thanks. <laughs> huh? How's it any different? Uh-oh. You don't know? <laughs> well then, human garbage! <laughs> Let me tell you! Accurately identifying people. I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happens to the hero? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using Olive Garden materials. Sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is going to win us a sponsorship. <laughs> this is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There's one clear difference between the murders. In the photos from the Genocide Jack cases, look at the necks and stomachs. Here you'll see a clear difference. For one, the cause of death is different. In the, in the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes! That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's one more, uh, more, one more conflicting detail. That's right! In my murder, recipe of murder, it's the one you mentioned is the tortellini. Then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? I agree! Make stop everyone that. hungry. Oh, so, no, I want tortellini with pesto. Yep, yeah, sounds too. delicious. So, 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 are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other Genocide Jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you'll see a clear difference. Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by, uh, by her wrist. Actually a power cable, but we'll get to that later. What's your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Can you spell the word scissors? Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. Really hard to miss. I don't know how you forgot about this. Yeah, I don't know. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional. So naturally, I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac says there's two differences, but he's wrong! Big Mac? Are, are you referring to me? <laughs> have to keep the food puns coming, naturally. Listen up, Big Mac! There's actually one more difference! Huh? My word! You, didn't, you really didn't notice? He 
take a look at who the victims were in his genocide death case. There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered! A pattern? If he gives that out, it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed the little lolly girl. Uh-huh. Hmm, let's see... There was a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims, and Shihiro didn't fit it. If you look at the names of every victim, what you'll notice is... I think I figured it out. I know why she couldn't have killed Shihiro. <laughs> is it because Shihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bullseye! Hey, everybody! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Ken Harada, 32. Tetsuro Honda, 17. Shoji Gaku, 23. How many of these names will I mispronounce? Kanoise, 14. Takeshi Yoshida, 30. I hope you're familiar with Japanese naming conventions. Kamatsuno Taro, Takafu Fumigono, Uchida Na e e Naoi. Yeah. Uh, Takeshi Masamu, Masamu, uh, Masa Masamue. Masamue. Yuto Yumajima. There was no entet. This is just to get my sister who studies Japanese really mad at me when she listens to the rest of the stream later. <laughs> <laughs> they were all guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are uh, only notable men! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I fed it! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. The hell is wrong with you? She was a short list of a dog. I can't help it. If there's a fool to buy a boy on boy fangirl, and then the mopey side of me, then I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the first track to becoming a full fledged fan, madam! <laughs> so, since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her. Would an Italian chef suddenly stop making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid! I have two. <laughs> Been a passion and conviction to cross that line. The absolute reality of the one and only. We get oh, it. by Akia, you were next. You clearly <laughs> explained your hobby and your philosophy. That's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, Lily Kerr. Lowly cur. Yeah, he was next. <laughs> I would never kill for the reason. Pity of me at survival. And if by some fluke I did kill the survive, I would have bothered with the message and arrangement. It had made me the obvious suspect. That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prize visit. Who would go out of their way to be the big stupid heavy dumbbell? Big like, stupid heavy guy? Sorry, what? Any scissors? I don't do just any soup! I only use my own instead of high crap and the entire world together! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. How do you feel about that? Oh god, that's what's in the sewing kits. Da 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 da! She's fully equipped! That's right! <laughs> I can kill anywhere, anytime! <laughs> Why would I resort to dumbbell the rope when I have my trusty lizard by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. 
You can't, can you? Get a dog, all of you! <laughs> not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot. The rope totally out of question anyway. I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a highness villain really be innocent? For once. But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah, that's like why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat, copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. Uh, two now. One person who could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Anyone who read that report. Mm -hmm. It's Celeste! Totally Leon! <laughs> Leon, from beyond the grave. He's the every murderer. From Leon the grave? Oh, too Got soon, too soon. <laughs> Biakia. It's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal oh. police records. Plus, you are, you'd already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Mr. Tagami did it? The reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So he arranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I'd put my stamp on it. The adorable collapsing man would be behind it all! I'm on fire! <laughs> Well, Biakiga, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm, looking back and thinking about it now... The way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Huh? Suspicious? It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay then, what's so strange about it? Go ahead, share it with the rest of the class. You actually showed up to breakfast on time. <laughs> there was a clear contradiction in what Biafius just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. Uh, New element has been added to non-stop debates. I'm pretty sure this is just adding um, this memorization thing. Let's see. Yeah. And now your hero skill can help you. Yay! Mm -hmm. Basically, you can memorize uh, weak points in a debate and then use it to shoot other weak points. Mm -hmm. This shooting mini game's getting more complicated. Yep. Yeah. You could say that's just Dunk and Rumpa in a nutshell. Mm. Yeah, it's usually pretty obvious. They'll give you like one useless truth bullet before you do it. Hakumi continue being the worst. Yep. I, I also just like Tokyo slash Genocide Jill's face during all this. <laughs> I 
I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So you claim we went to the girl's locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? When someone sees you venting in Among Us. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead, show us. Show me your moves. Mm. What's with Miyake's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him current, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. <laughs> What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. I use the defense, I'm rich. <laughs> the, the, there is, I think. Plea in this trial, wow. There is more to it. Think about it. We, well, actually you, just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The difference between this case and other Genocide Jack murders... The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible is hidden in there? What could it be? Damn it, can you just tell us the answers? You know everything. <laughs> I like to watch you struggle. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Dramatic reveal. <laughs> Byakuga, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no same it, 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 way some way he uses the that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. Then Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. <sighs> That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. <laughs> he's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's, what's ha that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened! So that's it, right? Byakuya is the killer! <laughs> I don't disagree with not disagreeing! He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win! 
Uh, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I, I, I think I ne we need to talk about this a little bit more. And my brain needs to get to 2 plus 2. Huh? Do we really need to? I've already decided who did it. I know, but still... There's something that's still bothering me. I have way more truth bullets than what we've used thus far. <laughs> is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Uh-huh. Not happening. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait. There you go. What was that just now? Something's not right. I think it's cookie time. Chihiro's yep. body was definitely found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean... Can I really just accept what Byakuya said as the truth? No, I don't think so. There's definitely something off of what he said. You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you, are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else and then carried there later. Along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me what you... T please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey, Byakuya, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakuya, who'd been so confident up till now... Maybe Byakuya never even realized that that actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on with uh, uh, permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere, uh, somewhere else. There was something that was switched between the boys' and girls' locker room. Okay, there was the very heteronormative explanation for the posters, but there was also the coffee stain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Because this is Japan in 2010, and gay people don't exist. <laughs> Your proof is some posters? <laughs> the poster in the girls' locker room was... A picture of a big boob supermodel, but don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? Aoi says exactly nothing. I was, I was just gonna say that, I was like, Aoi knows. <laughs> Innocent whistling. I bet those massive thugs of hers were totally fake. <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. You need to know a lot about Tornado, Makoto. Yeah, I to go know the name of that band, but not Sayaka's. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. Because clearly, as we said, this is 2010 Japan. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker room. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? Uh oh. You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? 
Protein coffee. The with Babish episode with protein coffee. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I thought it needs to happen. You feel me? Sorry, now I'm just picturing a village binging with Babish episode that's entirely dang and rampa, and there's just protein coffee and like tortellinis with pesto and <laughs> donuts. <laughs> donuts. <laughs> donuts. 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 All right, so we're gonna go tweet it binging with Babish. And a lot of Pepto Bismol. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pink frosting on the donuts. <laughs> yeah, flotation Perfect. donuts. Flotation, flotation donuts. donuts. <laughs> <laughs> While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. <laughs> but I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. I think that doesn't look like a coffee stain. It, it really looks worse. Yeah. It really does. Yep. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other, it's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? Yeah, I didn't do that, right? Oh. In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along, along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? <clears throat> why would they go to all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. The murder did play, take place in the boys' locker room. Then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? The tunnel that's being uh. hidden by the posters, duh. <laughs> to get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e handbook across the card reader device. No, you know. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. I feel like Ultimate Programmer could ha hack that. No, she did have a way! And I can tell you what it was! I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm, I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it! Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? <laughs> My face! <laughs> I hope we get more of that later. <laughs> I think she'd need an interface, no? Probably. <laughs> Unless she here is a psychic programmer. <laughs> Actually, a technomancer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm psychic. I'm psychic. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I don't think Shihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because you suggested it and you're an idiot. <laughs> because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh! Well then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. <laughs> Is there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. 
Yep, yep, yep! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers like I said! She used her ultimate programmer skills and... <laughs> Can't fix any handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring. So if she didn't use the old handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Naegi's initial assumption is just wrong. It's like there's like no way she could have got it into the boys' locker room, so I guess so? <laughs> okay then, I vote for Byakuya! <laughs> it's not. Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya is the one who did it? Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. I just have more accounts and evidence from people. Hold on a second. <laughs> I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? Fuck you. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. Oh, mm. that line reading. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that... Why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Can you do that? Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Just bear with it for a moment. Uh, don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more interesting and exciting. What if I throw in a cookie? All right then, I love cookies. Declare an official class trial recess. <laughs> oh my god. Huh? Like, for real? I can do whatever I want. Oh then, do you want to show us? Better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put uh, had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead, and where she took us was. I really want her to just open up the handbook, but this is 2010 Japan. This is just going to be an upskirt. Mm -hmm. I hate the everything. girls' locker room. We've already searched this place top to bottom. What are you trying to pull, Missy? Don't call me Missy. I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it again? I'm kind of a creep. <laughs> Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. This is really weird. Don't forget to look at the junk. She also has a completely unacknowledged flair for the dramatic. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, Hifumi, you're not allowed. No way, no way, no way, no way. <laughs> That's what we said. Yep. It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable. <laughs> It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just, uh, based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. Sak Sakura, our hero. But you're like a girl, you shouldn't have to touch a dead body, you just let one of the boys do it! I really hate the gender things in this game yep. so much. 
No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. Eh. Yeah, sure. sentence. So just leave this to me. Sakura? So sexy! <laughs> what is this? Some kind of secret girl and girl acting? Is it who you two are about? <laughs> yes. Like, shut up. <laughs> That's not it at all. Like, stop screwing around. That's for later. Me thinks yep. the lady doth protest too much. Yup. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. There's no way I could just tell you. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What does this... <laughs> I've never touched one of these before! <laughs> <laughs> what is it? B not possible. It's not possible. I can't believe you made me touch one of these. <laughs> Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Shihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This, this girl is. It's like what? Not my time! <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, baby. I'll like fix it later. Thank you for confirming this. You don't know her pronouns. What? <laughs> You're what do you joking, think, Japan? right? I wouldn't joke about this. Soccer, a very upset, haven't touched a penis. Yep. The, 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 then... The, then it's really true? Shihiro was... A guy? You know, this is really not something we should just be assuming without talking to Chihiro. Exactly. Uh, yeah. A little difficult, but yeah. Very difficult. When um, I get to the tier 3 friendship, this is your fault. Yeah, if you get far only enough, we had done the tier three friendship. Yeah, if you get far enough, your tier will actually state that that they're at least it seems to say that they do, they do identify as male. Hmm. Oh, what you guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat. G hero Fujisaki was totally a guy. I feel like you could have put this in your forensic report. <laughs> They look. Oh God! Is, wait, is crossdresser even still a proper word? I don't even know. I, no, I don't know. I'm uncomfortable. I'm not gonna say that. Now I, I'm really on fire. I wish I had killed him. I think crossdresser is okay, but I think so. Yeah, I mean, I definitely know one. Yeah. And I'm a, and is that then that genocide Jill actually would have ki it killed Chihiro because is now interested in Chihiro? Yeah, pretty Maybe. much. So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone. Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. One very awkward, silent walk back to the courtroom later. <laughs> I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now Sakura then, doesn't get to wash her hands. Let's resume the class <laughs> trial. I like to make it better later, baby. An entire bottle of hand sanitizer. Oh no. <laughs> We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that your hero was actually a boy. Let's pick it up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. I think. Apparently. I think Chihiro was actually a guy, maybe, probably, why did I not get to tier 3 friendship support? 
This would be so much clearer if we if we could just have gotten the pronouns from Chihiro. Mm -mm. The thought has never even crossed my mind. What's funny is I don't think the game changes if you actually get that revelation. Mm. Oh, right. I think <laughs> they don't. I think you can't get that on your first playthrough, though, right? Uh, you can if you get very lucky with presents. Huh. Or save scum for presents. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem getting access to the boy's locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender of male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. Just like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. Mm. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So, Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is getting uncomfortable. Yep. Also, Bianca, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think they all are. <laughs> this is the most terrifying situation! Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Genocide gels in Ted. <laughs> so now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, like, That's connected or clear or, like, whatever, we still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Uh, what about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one who that made Chiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But, but I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. He just really wanted to get Toko killed. He just seems to be too easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And do you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Avert? He's not subtle. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And again, and then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy. If you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. Mark it as, like, correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room and decided to alter it. Because I'm a creepy creepy motherfucker. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not. 
fucking with you right now. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I do love the delivery on that in English. <laughs> well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If, like, you're really telling the truth, then why? Why'd you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Affluenza is a very dangerous disease. <laughs> it was a sex thing. Now then, oh. if it wasn't me, who was it? <laughs> well, well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. You're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was through Byakuya did it. Look, we already were over this hero. Any suggestion you have is dumb. <laughs> no, I'm with Makoto. As I like to be. If there's any doubt whatsoever, <laughs> we need to explore every possibility. Everyone's just pairing off. <laughs> because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight! Count me in! Do you not have a mind of your own? Not really. Yeah, I'm not sure why I was surprised by that question. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do! What am I, an ant or something? I would not be surprised. Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have to, a time to make our decision. That's very true. Also, I would like to go wash my hand. Our, like, lives are all on the line. Excellent! Then shall we resume our game of hide-and-seek? But if Byakuya didn't do it... Then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? Can I just say Hifumi? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means... Ah uh, yes, the three genders. Guy, girl, and genocide Jack! <laughs> exactly. Uh, they approve! <laughs> Such a progressive game to crush right. the gender binary in 2010. Right, 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 right. Uh, since the crime scene was the boys' locker room, you would need a boys' handbook to get in. Since Lean's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have ha had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But that's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. What if this trial actually went in the direction that everyone was secretly presenting as the other gender? <laughs> that would certainly be a twist. <laughs> I would be here for that twist, except that this game would not handle that well. It no, would it would not. not. <laughs> it would not have. Objection. I think we should translate that as bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here for it. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That's why you're making all making such ugly noises. Whatever, just hurry up and tell us. It was last night. 
right before it's night time. I saw Chihiro in a dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, yeah, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. He was wishing that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that's when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Hiro told me he was in, in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. I wonder if you hit stage 3 with Chihiro before then that you would be one of the people on that list. Probably. That would... mm. I don't think the game has that much dynamic programming. Mm. It would be great if it did. Yeah. It would be great. No, it yeah. doesn't change. There's not really anything dynamic apart from really B3. Hmm. Also, I'm going to upgrade this. Ooh, woo! What a marvelous friend! I like how yes, Genocide Jill just has that face in the background. Oh, yeah. This is the give me the Yaoi and Yuri face. <laughs> the point is, like, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who that, like, was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. Knowing it's half the battle? No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. When I was playing the game at this point, I had to say no. Actually, I don't. <laughs> I only know because I played this before. S seriously? <laughs> who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence we don't have? I mean, I'd be down for it if I had a kid. <laughs> Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yoko would. laughs> As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Like, easy for you to say. Smartest person in the room. But, fine. Celeste, like, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and take a bar. <laughs> Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Does Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? I guess it must because she said it did, but. <laughs> Somehow it's really hard to believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
How many truth bullets do I have for this shot? A lot. Or do I need to take a weakness? <sighs> this was really annoying to play. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I mean, mood. <laughs> Where else would you have gotten it from, Hero? I mean, was there anywhere where it was established that Chihiro's tracksuit was blue? Hmm. You can see it in the bag that it's blue. Hmm. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? Yeah, I figured I'd go to the full one, that one. Yeah. She's right. What he said just now is really odd. Actually, and I didn't, didn't mean to, to accidentally point it out. <laughs> uh, you act no, you actually don't. You just fire Celeste's account out of I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. How did he know something like that? I didn't mean to accidentally point it out. Uh, uh -huh. Bullshit! <laughs> I fucking knew it! Sorry. <laughs> Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? What'd I say? When Ces uh, Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... Flashbacks. I thought I was stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then I assume he headed off to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. She's so fucking tricksy because we saw it! Yep. So why did you yeah. say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you? You just... Hey Celeste, what color was Jahiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. Like my hair in this shot, but not others. <laughs> <laughs> and before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo? How did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Because I... I... I just... I, I, I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Oh, sorry, that's me. The only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he thought Shelly with it before he died! <laughs> that's the only possibility! <laughs> Terry, are you, like, talking about Shiro? So how about it? Did you see a tracksuit or didn't you? Typo! Yep. Mm -hmm. Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffed the, bag into the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It's almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed this, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. Yeah. Yeah. 
It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit, and it'll be obvious who we met with. What a bunch of nonsense. Uh, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. Well done. That's why you said you never did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, that is my slip of Manda was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. He's the only That's guy who swole. <laughs> but why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. Because I hate him! If you play as me now. Oh wait, oh, sorry, I actually hit the wrong one. <laughs> there was a certain turning point that tipped me off, and I think turned off- turned- turned- no, tipped off Dottie! <laughs> I knew it too, actually. Mm. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. Yep. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Yep. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Notice such a tiny detail? Hey, oh, what? She's a what? You're the pilot of the life, right? <laughs> I missed it when I played it. <laughs> no, I'm not the fright. <clears throat> no, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. <laughs> uh. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? Uh, uh, I, 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 I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Because you are one. You're ultimate delinquent. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. How dare you accuse my husband of? <laughs> Thank you. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. Th that was fast. Well, this test presents us with a problem. It seems we're all out of leads. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Hifumi, weren't you telling me you'd found some evidence? Really? Like, what kind of evidence? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, did your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. I really insist. Oh, here it is. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to. It's mine. I want more of them. <laughs> we know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact, indeed. I was totally sure I found it. Then, like, it must have some clue about the culprit, right? Broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. 
That's odd. I didn't think the hand was quite so fragile. You're right! They're not! They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. Would take an awful lot to break one. Their true weakness is pompadours. This one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is remarkably high failure rate. Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? Oh, precisely. Did the handbooks get broken? How do the handbooks break? There's only one possible explanation. You already t told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Gah! You remember that? First. It was bolded. Sure, maybe I let that slip. I never told anyone what the weak point actually was! But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them prove in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just like tell us already! Why would we want to break down our own freaking handbooks? <laughs> Just add it as a rule that it's no longer allowed to be broken in this manner. That would be the sensible thing to do. What the heck? <sighs> oh well. I have a weakness for pushy demands. Are you sure you won't follow their example? Hey, you should let us out of here right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> she's a fair cop. <laughs> Harsh but fair. Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting edge e handbook is. Exposed to high temperatures for too long, you'll suffer a meltdown and totally break! Kinda like any other piece of complex electronics. <laughs> Weird. That's not cheers. I flipped it. You knew it? Because I found the handbook lying on the floor of the sauna. Mm -hmm. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burned, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. The layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. This sounds like BS, but whatever. Wow, interesting. I learned one new fact today. Has anyone here actually ever been in a sauna? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Any confirmation on the burning? That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. I know you're not supposed to be in them for very long, but I always yeah. thought that was a But that's, I think, thing. mostly just dehydration and overheating. Yeah, dehydration overheating, yeah. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meeting the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But, like, how did they find out? Monokuma said he didn't, like, tell anyone, right? <laughs> what if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? Here we go. What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, 
and it broke. They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Shihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. <laughs> I might know someone who did. It was a very <laughs> homoerotic moment. Seriously? I think the one who may have taken the handbook into the sauna was. He didn't. He didn't stay fully dressed. Good. No. Might have brought their handbook into the sauna. It had to be the one who wore all their clothes into the yep. sauna. It was. Mando. But who are the options? Ah, everyone. Yeah, you can, you can always go through everybody. I was hoping this would give us three options, like boy, girl, genocide, Jack. <laughs> Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Why do you keep having evidence? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? Yeah, they did. Mm. <laughs> endurance contest, Eric quote-unquote. And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. No, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... If I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt... Bullshit. <laughs> Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leo's handbook, Leon's handbook never should have been broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook is in the, in the main hall is actually Mondo's, which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But like, doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is like prohibited? We've gone over this like three times. Uh, I don't know. She's not the brightest crayon. Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student! It's kind of a gray area, I admit, but no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. Us 
such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Of course not. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What, what, what's wrong, bro? Come on, tell him he's wrong. You are wrong. You have to be wrong. Everything you just said is wrong. You made it all up. Otherwise, I'm fucking a murderer. Otherwise, okay. my fuckboy is disappearing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He's gonna be so lonely now. Mondo totally told him last night that he had a headache. Mm -mm. And that's why he had to be go stay in his room. Okay then, why don't we look back on this case one more time from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong. Let's write a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Also, comic to hear it's so cute. Yeah, that's true. Just look at that uh, face. Uh, where is the... Oh, here. Oh, right. You can go both directions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pretty sure that's that. What? Oh, so the pass is the one below it. Yeah. how this poster is vitally important. Yeah, and th those two right there are very confusing if you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I have this right. I think so. Uh, let's see. I think it's probably that. Oh, no, never mind. That's been speaking. Just, uh... Something about the carpet? A door. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I feel like they made these easier. They at least made them more clear, for sure. Yeah, and Yakuya's being that bitch. Mm. Yakuya being, this is too boring. It's gonna be real dumb. Mm -mm. If Byakuya is purposely going to troll with the next couple of murders such that it looks like it's him, but then he can prove it's not, mm -hmm. such that when he actually does kill, everyone just assumes it's not him. <laughs> First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Shihiro headed out even though it was officially nighttime, and we're just going to assume Celeste said that she confirms it. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. Waiting for a line. I didn't have one. <laughs> but how could the victim, who is apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Well, we went over this. We aren't going to go into this because none of us are qualified to talk about it, and this was poorly handled. <laughs> we should have hit t a tier 3 re relationship supports. That way we could have gotten pronouns officially from the person involved. Agreed. Mm -hmm. 
Spy, who's able to use his own key input to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there, and the person he met was the one who killed him. Seems like that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approaching the unsuspecting Chihiro. And attacked him. That's where the bloodstains on the poster and the carpet in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment, the body was arranged, but the murder itself was unplanned. Felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act, first pulling up the blood-stained carpet, then removing the bloody poster. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove the uh, uh, that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Juko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. And then and that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought uh, uh, brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. Apparently, this is important. That could have been the end of things, but no, Byakuya decided he had to be a total asshole. Mm, yeah. Yep. Yaku discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated because this smug rich asshole doesn't understand consequences. So after stumbling on the crime scene, sorry, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library and then he got to work. I'm not sure why there was an emphasis on he there. As opposed to Mondo, I think. He used the cord to strain up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, knew, it, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo? I forgot how to pronounce your last name, Awada. Is that at all close? Yes. Well, wait, no, th th this can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah, yeah, where's your evidence? You need evidence. You need proof. You need a culprit that isn't my bro. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him. Evidence that Mondo's the killer, that already revealed itself earlier in the trial. That can somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now. Once I do that, everything will become clear. I kind of like the idea that it wasn't, it was less Mondo trying to hide the murder, but more 
trying to protect Chihiro's secret because he, he felt bad about it. Uh, listen to the rest of the trial. <laughs> yeah, we okay. might get some clarification. Now people can shoot at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh god. It's the Negaverse. Yep. Oh, sorry. Oh. Alright. No, never mind. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I yeah, refute I you. Two of these False. Row, hasn't he? You're correct. <laughs> Show me some evidence. I won't listen. I refute you. It's a very funky background, though. I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. I need more lines. <laughs> Without any proof, you can't put the blame on him. I like how he's the one having the breakdown, not Mondo. Uh, it hits me right in the, the shipping heartstrings. Yeah. Right? If my thinking so far is right. Right? Hits you right in the prostate. Ma <laughs> I don't Mondo know must have. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so just gotta keep moving on. Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll... We don't gotta do that. Huh? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. Yay, Only A rank. <laughs> Despite my, my butchery of the first bullet time battle. I mean, that's probably why it's an A. Mm -mm. Bro, 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 what are you saying? <laughs> I got no choice, man. After hear hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. As for the goddamn verdict. Roger that. Well, wait, hold on. No waiting, no holding on. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank. Not that lever. Yank, not wank. Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice, or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? I like in some of the later ones where you actually get to see who every person voted for. Yeah, that is what that is a nice feature of D three. Well, you see a tally, but yeah. Uh oh, this time it looks like you got it right again. Yes, it is so. The blackened that killed Chihiro Fujisaki was no Awuna. <laughs> In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. <laughs> you're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I I, I refuse to believe it. There, there, there's no way, no way he could have killed someone. Sorry. Why are you apologizing? 
Why? 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 Why did you do it? Well, it looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. The story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the B button to fast forward the text. Taka is desperately trying to figure out what the B button is. <laughs> anyway, there was once a young boy. And his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness to take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority co already complex had already taken root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which, of course, included Jihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Jihiro is actually a boy. And that was something Jihiro wouldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. How great would it have been if it was something like Chihiro doesn't comment their code or something else <laughs> was the embarrassing secret. Just like ignore this part entirely. <laughs> like, ev ev like everything is in main. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is using print statements for debugging. Programmer humor. I don't Yay. understand it. <laughs> If that was revealed, it would be the end. The heart and shell would crack. The armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. Mm. That was my chance. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. 
信じたいんだ With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. So, that day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to... It was me. Yep, it sure was. The biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. I'd mislabel that. <laughs> so he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. That was his aspiration. He thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. So, so then, that must be why Mondo did what he did. To keep the promise he'd made to Jihiro. Huh? Did what he did? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Wasn't that the cover-up when he'd done? That's funny. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. Howie. But like, how does maybe the body keep his secret? Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So... He tried to protect Chihiro's secret, by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook. See? Then... Mondo did all that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed. All future promises between men need a don't murder each other clause. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. No, I... Oh god, did Chihiro ask him to do this? Let's keep going. What? Why? Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? Dottie, I think you're right. So why? Why did you? Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. Yeah, buddy. So that's what triggered it, after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. The, the, that's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? It's impossible. Mm -mm. 
I'm pretty sure how, I have an idea. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. Protecting the secret meant making sure it didn't come out the next day. Well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. I know you know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. Yeah, I knew that. <clears throat> Yeah, that's right. That a while you, were, ago. you were right that the murderer was the one who killed Mondo's brother. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was actually right on that. <laughs> Your prediction was accurate. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. Mondo's older brother's name was Daya Owada. He's even got Dai in his name. It's perfect. Also, and wears all white, just like my fuckboy. <laughs> Mon Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang and is wobbly as fuck on that bike. Yeah. <laughs> Foreshadowing. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. Ew. <laughs> Weird Yum. combo. But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his older brother someday, his brother's greatness reputation began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that's gonna do is make the gang look bad. Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. We fast and furious now, I think. <laughs> but during the race, tragedy struck. Gotta watch out for those Itsuzus. <laughs> the kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... And now Daya is isekai <laughs> <laughs> shit, you're right! Laying in, his kid... Laying in his kid brother's arms, 
the older brother delivered his final words. You want to you take this one? Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> My bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course. For being knew. so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he knew it was his brother's fault. But Daya never blamed him for what happened in the ten seconds before he died. Shocks a bitch like that. <laughs> hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Cause it's the team you and me put together. Just your corn hair and my John Stamos face. <laughs> it's... <laughs> oh my god, I can't unsee that. <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked solemn death scene. <laughs> <laughs> A promise between men. He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit it to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result... The team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who'd bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad, he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I'm strong. Strong, 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 strong. And, and yet... As soon as our killing game began, he realized... No matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. And then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. He likes to talk about himself in the third person. Mm. I do. It's a hobby. Mm -hmm. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own brother. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I'd been carrying around, it all would have been for nothing. So that's why. That's why I... I... Makoto? Oh, sorry. Mondo. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness and just started swirling around. I'd never felt anything like it before. Uh, I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety way down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Jahiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I... He told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus! 
But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Because, I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. Demo. You're so strong. They can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. So what? You're saying I should just say it? You're saying if I really am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I've never had. So I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. Are you making fun of me? I'm strong? Are you fucking with me right now? I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed, and ruin everything? Why did you have to tell me that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? No, no, no I just really admire you. I admire your strength. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I am strong. Strong, 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 strong. Stronger than you. And stronger than Dia! Hmm. Some feedback on that. <laughs> I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet, covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand, and I was just staring at him, down on the ground. <laughs> hey! I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I can I did something I can never take back. Again. Again. Mondo. He's normally so aggressive, so angry. He had that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Look at him! You see? You're all just like him. For a secret from the past, for a memory. For that, he killed another living human in cold blood. Even though this is clearly the de textbook definition of a crime of passion, but we'll set that aside. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Monokuma is not a legal expert, surprisingly. And, and also, <laughs> and also coerced. Yep. Oh, very much so. Yeah. 
He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in there? Cause I sure don't. You, you bastard. <laughs> Just shut up, you son of a bitch. Go ahead, say that again. I dare you. Damn, Taco used the B word. Okay. I'll say it as many times as I want. Which is what I want to say, but... Unfortunately, I can't do that right now. Because the time for punishing is fast approaching. P punishing? You knew about this, Makoto. There's been a lot of emotional, dramatic re revelations. It kind of slipped everyone's mind. Also, just going to say that I love how everyone's mental breakdown in this game involves repeating the same word over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> you you mean e e execution? That's what I promised you, right? The blacken that disturbs the peace will be punished. Uh, hold on! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment for Mondo Uwata, the ultimate biker gang leader. N no, wait, wait. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I said wait. I need to kiss him goodbye. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made from one man to another to switch next time. Here we go. What fucked up twisted execution will we see? Yeah, and it's a shame we can't read that. It's Monokuma, I can do anything. That's true. Cage of Death. I like how they show us revving that engine there, but it also is clearly still like paper cutout design. Right? That just happened. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? I have no explanation for you. <laughs> Look, I just... Uh, I think we missed a couple steps. I just... What? I really like pancakes, you guys. Okay, look, you elect you have someone running around really fast on a motorcycle, you electrocute them, and then it turns them into butter. It's a very simple step process. That's just science. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very tragic case with a very strange execution. Oh it, God. Yeah, that's actually one of the weirder executions. What? I mean, it, it made perfect sense up until the butter. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. 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 Laugh at death, and your soul will forever be at peace in my stomach. I guess we're good, then. Is it laugh or be confused? Uh, 4K no less dose. It, it, it can't be. 
My brother! Is butter? Another murder and another execution. And what the fuck, Monokuma? I just had a really bad thought. So did I. Was I it the same one? Again. It might have been. Let's find out! Share your horrendous thoughts. I, I don't think it is because that's an English pun. I mean, I speak English, but that's not probably not what I was thinking. No, I mean, like, I don't think the game would have done it because it's an English... The thing I am thinking is an English pun, and it would have made more okay. sense if you were I think we just need to pun. explain. Yeah. I'll go first, because it was really bad. I was thinking, could you use Mondo Butter as a loop? Okay, uh, Dottie, you go. <laughs> no, you know, That's I terrible. was thinking the same thing. Uh, same. I went one step further with calling it but er. Oh. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I hate all of you. Everyone, you get your along. mind out so, of the gutter. So, uh, Dottie, next time we next time we see each other, I owe you a high five. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're all going we're all to perverts. hell. <sighs> we're all going to hell. Uh, I yep. can normally ride the pervert train, but that's just a little too far for me. <laughs> oh. The line. The line is crossed when we involve using the dead body as lube. Yes. Honestly, though, with how cringy this entire case was, I'm glad mm. we're ending it on something this completely fucking stupid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And hey, like, we I got think the... we needed that release. Yeah. Uh, that's what right. I guess. I, I but... also love that the, the super homoerotic, <laughs> like, funny scene ended up being key to the trial. Mm. Incredibly uh... plot important. Mm-hmm. Okay. Meanwhile, Makoto is over here, you know, writing an emo song. Right. Yep. <laughs> that will be his... He'll switch from ultimate lucky student to ultimate angsty poet. <laughs> it's the way he'll kickstart his career after all of this ha it, it ends. Uh, I kind of have to critically point out that the game did just kill its gaze. It's true. Mm -hmm. This is... Yeah. The game kind of. also didn't kind admit of. that I mean... it had gaze. Well, we still got Aoi and Sakura, and we have half of the other couple. Sure. All right. So All right. that was the thing. Let's go. All right. Because butter. I mean, butter. This game is a butter, 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 butter. Like, I don't think we need to really defend <laughs> that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. I mean, how... Murdering children is one thing, but murdering the... the uh, 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 but doing that is crossing a different line. Yeah. Maybe we go back to murder butter. Yeah, mm. let's go back to murder butter. All right, let's go okay. delicious, to delicious butter. murder butter. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. <laughs> Did that feel just like I might be going you? mad. <laughs> That's a symptom of gaslighting. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I gotta say, I wonder if the I wonder if the lives are so taken so lightly because they're whipped. Uh, 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 light and creamy. Uh, Maybe I'll just easily spreadable. Let it happen. Oh, damn it. <laughs> no. Is that this necessary? Is <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Taka's in the corner being Taka just like crying his eyes out while making terrible puns in the corner. It's true. And jokes about the death scene. <laughs> <laughs> God, I actually feel for this poor set of pixels on my screen. Yeah. This talk of sad screams invaded our skulls. We were each forced to realize once again, Taka has some really good crying sprites. Mm -hmm. But he, of course, he had to. Huh. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game. You're a disappointment, Biakia. <laughs> Your mom's a disappointment. But Biakia? You're, like, completely insane. You know that? A fucking game? One of your friends is, like, dead! Do you realize that? You asshole! Of course I do. Because this game is life or death. Uh, I know Lanamilog has to be a full-time asshole. <laughs> I don't have you... anything to say to you. I don't have a response, except that... Go ahead, I interrupted you. You did this. 
I know. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> yeah. Reminder, Lucky Opal and Kex were the ones who cast this entire game. <laughs> also, for anyone that has seen things about the difference between fan subs and official subs, the thing we're apparently going with the fan route of ad profanity all the time. Yep. <laughs> I mean, and yes, I know, I, I know exactly what I did with the casting. <laughs> I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? None. Why? Huh. Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. So you ignore the Nintendo world too. <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I, I looked inside and saw the corpse. You mean you actually witnessed the murder? <laughs> he was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I hate I you. I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up? So, after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene? Gado. But damn, man. If we hadn't figured out who really done it, we'd have been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course. Byakuya turned and looked at me into the eye. Eh, Byakuya turned and looked me in the eye. I can feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. <laughs> Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Oh, don't mind me. Once I do decide to become blackened, I now know who I'll have to watch out for. Wh what? So, that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Yes, we're done listening to your story. Oh, well, fuck you too. Moving on. There's something that I'd like to ask Monokuma. Oh, I'm up next. You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. All this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. You're over-exaggerating. I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair. What do you mean? Mean. 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 Mean, 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 mean. Median mode. <laughs> Good grief, I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. 
Whatever. It doesn't matter. What you are you say? literally putting them through this fucking trial so they would pick apart every little stupid thing. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor. And then everything will be revealed to me. Ah, the noble son of a noble family. Truly you understand me. <laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm gonna find you and kill you, understand? And the name of the Tagami family, for which victory is a foregone conclusion. Oh, so cool. It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you. I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. I mean, at least he has a code of honor, right? <laughs> temper, temper. Sounds like someone needs a nap. <laughs> Monokuma's unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> Monokuma's laughter paled across the courtroom, and the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo, and Byakuya being a total dick. Mm -hmm. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue, because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of who were, eh, for those of us who are still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. <laughs> and we were just talking about Makoto not having a thesaurus, and then he comes up with that metaphor. His poetry skills are starting to get better, I guess. Hmm. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get going? Or get boring, rather? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. Went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, oh baby. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on. Okay. After all, that's what everyone wants to see. There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. Who is it? 16th high school student, I mean. Mm. Ah? My, my, you really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but. Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. Nobody would be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> and Dottie? 
Now I owe you a high five because we totally got that right at the beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then oh, there were she, ten. She killed someone from the start. Mm-hmm. What? No. No, no. What, what was said? It, what was said is the person who was being talked to was supposed to start things off, mm -hmm. but Sayaka did it instead. Oh, you received okay. the crazy diamond present. Oh God. Oh, I think that goes to Taka. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we should just start wearing it at at uh, breakfast in front of Taka. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I guess that's gonna be it for this week's stream. Uh, we'll be back with for more next Saturday with uh, chapter three. Hope everybody had fun. Uh, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Look forward to it. Woo! That's the anime character thing to say. Bye, everybody. <laughs>